Well folks, I figure it's about time to get back to doing these repair and startup videos. So I also figured it's a good time to get this whole simplicity going. This is a model VC walk behind that I've had for quite some time now up here in the woods. I ended up picking this up late 2018. I think it was towards the end of the year. I had bought it with a bunch of attachments, which I still have. A bunch of snow blowers and other various rotor tillers that go onto the back of it. And I never really got around to doing anything with it. I ended up trying to sell it a couple times. Nobody wanted to buy it. And I did kind of want to put it into the collection because I do like it set up with this tiller that I have on the back of it. It's kind of a neat looking rig. So it has an old Briggs & Stratton Model 19 on it. Cast iron block. It used to roll over. Unfortunately, it is stuck from sitting up here in the woods. So we're going to have to pull the head off of that and check everything out. I know there's mouse nests in the shroud. The tank is all shellacked up and everything with varnish and crap so that's going to have to get cleaned out so it's definitely going to need a really good going through <clears throat> and i know the tiller is probably going to have to get all hooked up because i don't have the belts for that or anything luckily enough all the engagement stuff is there so i got everything hooked up and we'll get it rolled down out of the woods and get it into the garage simplicity is up on the lift table so the first thing that i'm going to do is get this shroud gas tank carburetor all that stuff pulled off of here that way I can get the head off and take a look inside and see what the current state of this thing is since it's currently seized and you can't move it I don't know how much water got into that exhaust if it was just moisture and it's lightly stuck or if it actually pooled up inside there with water hopefully not but we'll start disassembling and take a look inside Not just from looking in, but you can already smell the shellac in it floating around the garage. So that's going to have to get cleaned out outside. Now with any luck, I won't have to pull the wheel off at this side, because I've only got about a finger width in between that and the shroud. But there's also a good chance might have to. I don't remember if you could do it without pulling the wheel on these. <laughs> and that's why I hate mice, folks. There you have it. They get into everything and they make you just make an absolute mess of everything too. Luckily enough, this is all wet, but it's still frozen in here, so I should be able to get that out in chunks outside. At least it all stayed in the shrouds. So I'm gonna get this shroud cleaned up. I'm gonna pop this flywheel off and I'll check back with you folks once I get all that squared away. Mm, it's already loose. It's probably a good reason why this thing is all stuck. Although luckily enough, I don't see any rust in there through the plug hole. So hopefully it's just stuck from the moisture getting in through the exhaust. And there's nothing serious inside. Of course, now it wants to move. <laughs> Figures, folks. Well, take a look at this. As you can see, there's nothing on the top of the cylinder. There's really no rust or anything else. The head looks nice and clean aside from all the carbon and stuff, but I guess clean in a sense where there was no moisture or water in there. So I don't know what was holding it up. There's a good chance that it might have been 
this coil because the mice were all around here and there's a very thin gap between the magnet and I guess you could say the coil itself, the bars on either side. So there might have been some junk stuck in here. It could have been from the mice being in there because I blew all that out really good when I was cleaning that. And I bet you that's what ended up causing it to stick. There is some moisture around the top of the cylinder when I rolled it down, but really not enough to make it stick. And there's plenty of oil, as you can see, on it too. And there is some rust down at the bottom of the exhaust stem. So I know this was getting water in it. I know for a fact, because the way I had it up on the hill there, I knew it was going to get some down inside. All the more reason to bring it down the hill and give it a revamp. So, Alright, so I'm going to run the head through the glass bead blaster, clean all that up real nice. I'm going to scrape and clean this head up here, go find another head gasket, and then we can get this head back on here and see what it's got for compression. Head of the engine cleaned up fairly nice. As you can see, it's nice and shiny again. I got rid of all the carbon. The cylinder walls look pretty darn good too. They're a little bit glazed, of course, being as old as it is, but there's no scoring, and there's really no lip on the top from the rings wearing in. The valves cleaned up all right too. The exhaust one was definitely the worst. It had the most carbon buildup on it. If this focuses, you should be able to see the face of the valve. It's fairly clean. I gave it a redneck valve job, which I know some of you guys should remember that. I usually stick in the sandpaper like so and then close the valve and run it around it. It's just a quick way to clean up the seat and the face so you can get a little bit more compression without formally pulling the valves out and going about it that way. So I got my head all cleaned up in the glass bead blaster. So that's all been decarboned except for just a little spot there on the side. That's ready to go back on and I was able to luckily enough find a package of head gaskets in my NOS Briggs & Stratton stock. So that's all ready. So now I just have to never seize up my bolts and we can get this head torqued back on. The head bolts on this Briggs Model 19 get torqued to 190, I think it was 190 inch pounds. And since I tend to figure that my foot pound torque wrench is a lot more accurate than the old inch pound torque wrench, I just divided that by 12, which comes out to 15.8. So I just round up and go to 16 foot pounds. And that's what we're going to torque it down to. So I'm just going to start at 10. Make sure everything's going down evenly. And then I can move up to 16 and give everything the final torque. And now that our head's back on, I want to get the flywheel and the shroud put back on there too. So I left these outside so they could dry up in the sun some. I just got to finish scraping some of the mouse crap out of them and banging some of the crusty rust out of the bottom of the shroud and get as much of the flaky stuff off as I can. And then I'll just wipe them down with an oily rag on the inside since this probably will be back outside again, maybe under a tarp. And once they're all cleaned up, then we can get these mounted on, get the shroud bolted back on, and then we can delve into the carburetor and fuel system. Before I put the shroud back on, I am going to take care of this ignition system first to make sure everything's up to par. That way if I have to pull the flywheel off to get to that coil in case something's wrong, I don't have to pull everything back apart again. So this has been sitting up in the woods, as I said, but it's never had a cover on the ignition points. So they've always been exposed to the elements and open like this. I do have a points cover on a parts engine out back that I'm going to run up and grab to put onto this, but I want to make sure that everything is working and operable there with the condenser and the points along with that coil before reassembling this. But I am going to take our, apart this carburetor and get this off of here. That way I can access the points a lot easier from the back.
So for the sake of making this easier to work on, I just pulled the whole points box assembly right off of here. And on most of these, if not all of these number series, the larger cast iron blocks, if I'm not mistaken, they are all just cast points assemblies like this with the actuator lever that sticks off the back. They get a little gasket that bolts on. And then the points and condenser are on there. So I figured out the reason why somebody never put the cover back on here is, as you can see, somebody had replaced the condenser at one point. And this is the condenser for a two or three horse Briggs with the pancake gas tank that mounts to the fuel tank. One of those that behind the flywheel ignition systems like for a, a 60100 series engine. And obviously enough they couldn't fit the cover back on there. So just for kicks I went into my Briggs book with the parts breakdowns. And right there is the correct condenser for it. 291369. So I'm going to go take a walk up into the shed and see if I have one of those in my new old stock parts lot. And if so, I'll change it out. If not, I think I can get a Kohler condenser to fit into that area with the cover on there and have everything seal up real nice. Well, luckily enough, I did have a new old stock condenser up in the shed with some of my new old stock Briggs parts. Randy spanking, folks. Even has a little screw for it. So I'll be putting that back in. I did clean up my, I guess you can call it the actuator box. It's probably another name for it, but I got that all scrubbed down. I peeled the gasket off the back of it, which I was able to save. I don't have any of these kicking around, so I am going to make a gasket like I usually do with the paper and punch everything out. So I do want to pull these points off of here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not, but if you see the point contacts are misaligned, so I'm going to pull the points off and see if I can adjust this one because it's not sitting quite right in that plastic material. And if I can get that to sit down further, they are good points. They're not pitted or anything like that. They just need to be cleaned up. Alrighty, so I got my points and points box all cleaned up. As you can see, that bottom point there is nice and shiny along with the receiving one here. There's a little bit of pitting on the inside but it wasn't too bad, it's not gonna keep it from sparking. So these will work out just fine. So for those of you who end up pulling one of these apart this far, because this is also new to me, in order to set this point when it goes back onto this actuator shaft, so it's in the proper location, because you can see that, hopefully, it has a tapered shaft where it sticks out of that plate, and there's no keyway or anything else. So in order to set this point on the shaft in the proper position, this, piece of insulator plate or fiber material the edge of it here has to be parallel with the edge of the points box so they're both straight up and down parallel with each other and then you snug down this screw here and then you're gonna take this shaft and this has to be done while it's in the engine and you turn this shaft clockwise as far as it'll go which what that's gonna do is it's gonna take that arm and push it up against the cam gear and then you take and you slide on your receiving point onto that shaft, tighten it down, and then you can make your initial setting with the points from this screw. And that puts this in the proper position in relation to this actuator lever on the back. So that way, when it rides over the lump on the cam gear, it pushes the points open like so. Shroud's back on, along with the flywheel starter cup. And I pulled it over a few times. It does have a nice hot blue spark that's snapping across the spark plug. So luckily enough, everything works well with the ignition system. So now we can move on to the fuel system and start getting that all revamped. Dry as a bone. I was kind of hoping somebody shut the gas off on this before they parked it and it looks like they did. So when you're taking apart these Briggs & Stratton carburetors, these updrafts, they have, I refer to them as three bolt and four bolts, because these ones have three bolts that hold the body together, and I believe from 10 horse and up, they have four bolts that hold the body together, and it's a little bit bigger where the fuel bowl is. So there's a main jet that runs like this through the inside of the carburetor. You can pull these apart with that main jet still in there, but it's really hard to do. But you got to take that out first before you split the body a half, in half. And to do that, the easiest way, if you do a lot of them, is I ended up modifying a screwdriver where I ground down the sides of it so it'll sit, it'll fit down inside of this 
jet and I can get the full width of the blade on that main jet down inside because I've stripped out a number of these on my own stuff and it didn't take me long to just make a screwdriver for it because it's no fun trying to get these out when they're stripped. Nice and clean. Yeah, you can't complain with that, folks. Floats nice and clean. The only thing that's left in there is some moisture and some water from sitting outside. So whether you'll be able to see that, there's a little bit of that white, probably corrosion at this point. I don't think it's that white powdered gas. So that's not too bad. So I'm just gonna dry the bottom of this so that way I can run it through the glass bead blaster, clean up all my surfaces here on the bottom half and the top half, make sure my float is set properly, and then I can put this back together with a new gasket and our carburetor will be all set to go back on. Carburetor is all mounted up, cleaned up, and ready to go. So now, we get to clean out the gas tank. All right, so we're gonna dump this out outside here. Cause this stuff is so bad smelling. I won't be able to get it out of the garage for a couple of days. Oh. Well, hopefully you folks will be able to see the inside of this tank with the flashlight shining in there. You can see it's pretty darn crusty from having that gas sit in there for too long. This is usually why I try to drain out the tractors that are going to be sitting for a long time around here any more than, let's say, two or three years, and I drain the tanks and dry everything out because the gas gets really nasty inside of these tanks when it sets too long. So I figure power washing it will remedy that and clean most of that stuff out. It doesn't usually eat the inside of the tank. It more so builds up on the surface of the tank inside, and it's just giant flakes of rust. I had a customer's economy here about a month or two ago, a 60s economy, and... The inside of the tank looked pretty much like this from sitting and I stuffed the power washer in there, blew most of that rust out and it was able to be usable again. So we're going to take a crack at it and see if we can do the same thing with this one. Well folks, here we are a month later. It finally got warm enough where I could fire up the power washer and get this thing cleaned out. It's been teens and twenties here for the past few weeks now. So everything cleaned up fairly nice in it. As you can see, there's a little bit of surface rust on the bottom from when it dried out rusted up just a little bit but all the shellac all the rust and everything else flaked out of there real nice so it looks like we got a pretty good usable gas tank again so i pulled out the simplicity and we're going to get this sucker mounted up and see if this engine will fire up
folks, you can't beat an old cast iron series Briggs. So pretty happy with that. Thing runs pretty darn good and really wasn't any smoke on startup, which was nice to see. Unfortunately, it is definitely lacking some compression and it sounds like it's firing a little bit hard too. So I'm gonna have to check the points gap and make sure that's still in check because the timing might be off just a hair of a bit. So anyways, folks, that's gonna be it for part one. In part two, we're gonna be getting all the belts and everything hooked up, going through the transmission on the tractor and getting the tiller all squared away, make sure the gearbox is all good and full of oil and getting the belts and all the linkages hooked up along with making sure everything's all squared away for controls on the tractor handlebars. That way, when springtime finally comes, this will be ready to dig into the dirt and we'll see how it does tilling. So anyways, folks, until the next time, there you have it.